Hi everyone, I'm Nick Murray from uh, the University of New South Wales and the University of Queensland over in Australia. And today I'm going to talk to you quickly about a project that I'm working on uh, to map the world's intertidal zones at high resolutions and what more, do it as a time series. Now, the intertidal zone of the world is actually quite a difficult thing to map. It's, it's unmapped as it stands. This grey band that you can see around the coast of China is the intertidal zone. It's really important for regulating uh, sea level rise, for providing a whole bunch of ecosystem services to coastal communities and supporting a really unique biota, that is animals that live in these, these mud flats that in some cases like here can be up to 20 kilometres wide. Now the intertidal zone is under threat, it's at, it's at risk. This is um, the closest coastline to Beijing in China. And over the course of the last 15 to 20 years, there have been massive changes to, to this area. And in fact, along a lot of the coastlines of the world. Uh, and intertidal, the intertidal zone is also threatened by sea level rise at the same time. So it's really important we develop maps of that intertidal zone and understand how they're changing uh, across the world. Um, some work I did several years ago uh, indicates a big problem we have with remote sensing this intertidal zone. Here you can see that when a, a satellite acquires an image at high tide, you can't see this habitat at all, but at low tide you can. And so about five years ago I worked on a project across the coastlines of Asia where we modelled the tide height for every single satellite image acquired in the Landsat archive so that we could select those images that show this ecosystem uh, uh, with a Landsat image. <clears throat> and we found some incredible things when we looked at change. We found that these intertidal zones are actually disappearing very, very quickly and in some cases they're threatened at the sort of rates you see in other ecosystems that we all think about a lot. <clears throat> now, the problem with doing that sort of tide modelling is it's just not global and we were re using um, a, a method that required a lot of manual input. We were thresholding and and using uh, wa land water masks. And so this really is a Google Earth Engine problem. Uh, we've developed a completely new way of doing this now that we can use the Earth Engine. We're using all Landsat images in the full archive. Uh, we're using machine learning methods. Um, we've really completely changed the way we do this. And now we can automatically map the intertidal zone across the whole world. Uh, this will be a global time series from 1984 to now uh, with 11 time steps. And in this, image here you can see that around Seoul in South Korea, even in about 30 years there's been enormous changes. If you've ever flown into Incheon Airport, you can see it there in the top of, the, um, the top of that image, showing that one of the largest airports in the world was built in this intertidal zone. It's cheap, it's flat, and it's actually cheaper than buying uh, land onshore. Thank you. So right now you're just using Landsat. Um, how much could you improve it by incorporating like Proba, Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, et cetera? A lot, yeah, that, that'll be in the, the next version, I think. And um, the next update for this map will be in 2020 and we'll be looking really carefully at incorporating Sentinel-2. It also has predictors such as slope and um, uh, distance to shore, things like that as well. So. 